turn in your Bibles with me. I'm going to read a scripture. We're going to jump in. Turn to Psalm 16, then put a bookmark in Romans chapter 12. I'll get there in just, in just a moment. Psalm 16, verse 5 and 6. If you don't have your Bible, you can turn your Bible on your phone, or you can look at the big Bible on the screen and follow along with me. Psalm 16, verse 5. You ready? Can I get a yeah? yeah. It says, you, Lord, are all that I have, and you give me all that I need. How many thankful we serve a good God? Amen? And I love this. My future is in your hands. Every prayer, every need, everything you're believing God for, we put it in his hands. And I don't know about you, every time I put something in God's hands, there's always goodness and blessing that comes back in return. Amen? My life is better in his hands than mine. It goes on to say, and here's what I'm talking about today. How wonderful are your gifts? Everybody say gifts. To me, how good they are. How wonderful are your gifts? How good they are. If you're taking notes, here's the title of my message. I want you to write it down for me. Here's the title. It's this. And it's a declaration. It's a statement. It's for me. Come on. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's for you. Come on, look at your second choice and say, it's for you too. Come on, look at your Okay, and everybody, I need everybody to shout out. Everybody shout, it's for me. It's for me. Come on, shout out louder with faith. Come on, it's for, me. it's for me. Come on, Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, do what you do. <laughs> Holy Spirit, take over. You know every detail of every story that's in the house today and everybody watching. Father, wherever we are right now, pray we're going to leave here full of faith the joy and full of hope that we know you're right in the middle of our situation. God, we thank you for it. Father, while we're gathered, thank you, Jesus, for the Houston Cougars win yesterday. Come home. Thank you, Lord, that the Astros will get back on top and stay on top. And the Texans are going to get their first win. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together one more time for God's word. It's it's for, for me. It says, how wonderful are your gifts, how good they are. When I think about gifts, when we sign a covenant on our heart with heaven, we get the gifts of heaven. I don't know about you. Anybody remember what life was like without Jesus? I don't want to go back there. How I many you know the moment you said yes to Jesus, did everything begin to change in your life? Come on, am I with me? So when I sign a covenant on my heart with heaven, it comes with the gifts of heaven. In fact, uh, just show of hands, is there anybody in the room, that anybody in the room that loves to receive gifts? Come on, where are you at? Just raise your hand. How many of you like, you love to receive gifts, right? It's almost your identity. Come on, where are you at, all right? Now, how many, how many of you, how many love to give gifts? Come on, where are you at? You love to give gifts. Oh, come on, you're like, you just got fired up right now. Like, you got a gift on you to give to somebody today. You just love now. Now, with the show of hands, be honest. How many of y'all are re-gifters? Don't lie in church. Come on, where you at? <laughs> Throw your hands up. <laughs> Somebody just went like this. I guess they sit next to you. I don't know, right? It's like, oh, I'm a re-gifter, right? And uh, uh, I don't know if anybody else is this way, but I've kind of hit this age where I'm like, hey, I don't need nobody to get me a gift because I'm going to go buy my own gift. Come on, where anybody in the house? Let's go. <laughs> Am I right? I'm like, hey, there ain't no need in you guessing. You can just, I'll just let you know what I want. Give me a gift card. I will go get it. We'll put it under the tree. We can wrap it, and I will celebrate like nobody knows. I will be the best celebrator that anybody has ever seen. It's an amazing thing. Come on, has anybody done that? Let's go. Don't leave me hanging in here and alone. It's the absolute best. Can I tell you the gifts from God that I'm talking about today these are the gifts that you can re-gift somebody. These are gifts that if you choose by faith to have it in your life, you can accept this gift, and I'm telling you, favor and blessing and goodness will be on your life. You will realize that these gifts are for you. Come on, are you with me? Say, it's for me. It's for me. So God landed three, there's three gifts. I can mention multiple but there's three that were very specific on my heart 
that I want to share with you today. Because you got to understand these gifts are from heaven. It's a gift to you. Because you do know this, right? There is an enemy. And he's out to take you out. The Bible says what? He came to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to rob your peace. He's trying to rob your joy. But can I tell you, how many know God is the creator, right? The devil can't create nothing. He can only manipulate what God created. So here's how the enemy takes you out. He gets you to stop believing in the gifts from heaven that God has for you. The moment you stop believing in these gifts is the moment that he robs, steals, and he kills everything in your life. I don't want these gifts. I don't want these gifts for you. So I got three gifts for you today. Number one is this. I want you to write this down. Here's the first gift. It's a fun one. Somebody shout, joy Joy. is for me. me. Come on, how many of you love joy? Come on, how many of you could use some joy in your life? Where you at, right? Like, I love talking about joy. I don't know if you can tell, but I get a little excited. Like, I love, like, I love joy. I love walking in a room. I love meeting people on the worst day. I love, like, bringing, like, making rooms brighter. Like, you having a bad day? What's up? How can I help? <laughs> people walking in church, man, how you doing, man? I'm too blessed to be stressed. No, you stressed. <laughs> See it in your eyes right now. Bloodshot. You lie. Don't lie, church, and tell me this. How can I bring joy in your life? Joy is a gift from heaven. Yeah. Gift that God gives you and a gift we can help bring other people, Right? Here's what it says in the Bible in Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. It says this in Romans 12, verse 10. It says, Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Can I tell you right now, that wraps up, wraps up the heart and soul of the Hope City family right there. Come on, how many know we love each other right where we are to help each other get to where we're going? Can I get a good amen on that? That's why we say all the time, man, we family. Grammatically, it don't make sense, but it sounds good. Somebody shout, we family. Come on, we family up in there. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honor to one another. Be enthusiastic. This is amazing. And how you serve the Lord. Can I tell you right now, when I serve, is I serve enthusiastically. You will know that I love Jesus by how I serve and serve people. It says, keeping your passion towards him, boiling Hot. I love what it says. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Verse 12. Let this hope, here's my prayer, burst forth within you. Write this down or underline this in your Bible. Releasing a continual joy. Not a seasonal joy. Not a moment of joy. Not a day of joy, but a, what church? A continual joy. That it encourages us. Don't give up in the time of trouble, but keep meeting with God at all times. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more joy that I want to carry. I don't want to have just joy. I don't want to lose joy, but I want to have a continuous joy. Uh, The older I get, you know, I don't want to grow old and, and grow mean. Are you with me? Yeah. Like, 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 man, Brandon, he's so wise in his age, but he's so angry. Yeah. Like, that, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, I want every year that I have, every season that I have, I want to increasing, and I want a continuous joy. Come on, does anybody else want that in the house? Yeah. I think about that for my life. I think about that for my marriage and my family. My wife and I, we've been a- married 18 years. Come on, somebody, let's go, right? Yeah. And every year, it's gotten better. And the next 18 years, it's going to get better. That's why you don't want to miss the relationship series. I'm telling you, it is going to show you how to have joy in your relationships and how to have joy in your marriage because every year is a continual joy. Every year is a greater, greater joy. And I believe God is very passionate about this word joy, the spirit of joy, because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is is your strength. It's your strength. The Bible references the word joy and also this word, I love it, the word rejoice. Come on, somebody shout rejoice. There's some power to that. It references joy and rejoice over 400 times in the Bible. I think God is trying to make a statement that this is a gift that I want every single person to have. When you read the stats of this world, because how many know we live in a broken world, right? With broken people. Has anybody ever had a bad day? Come on, show of hands. Anybody? Okay, maybe there's more hands. Anybody ever had a bad week? Come on, we're good, right? Like, 
You've been there, so we need joy. Right now, currently, 280 million people are currently battling depression and anxiety. This stat right here blew me away. 88% of people are looking for something to make them smile. They're looking for joy. People are looking for, for, for joy in your life, and people are looking for us to help bring them joy in their lives. Can I tell you, joy only comes, continuous joy comes when you have a relationship with Jesus. Continuous joy comes with a relationship with Jesus. That's why we believe in this statement like, don't do life alone. Jesus was joy, and he didn't do life alone. There ain't no fun in me, myself, and I. Now, to every introvert, you're like, that is completely joy to me. <laughs> but how many introverts do I got in the house? Yep, nobody's raising their hand. That's what I thought. Okay, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's complete joy. Like, life, life, life brings, it brings you joy. There ain't no fun in me, myself, and I. But can I tell you this? Nobody needs to be alone on their worst day. Nobody needs to be alone on their most painful day. You Sometimes you need somebody that can step in the room in your life and help bring you the joy that you don't have right now. This is why you need family. Joy is with family. Joy is with church family. That's why we tell you to jump in the connect group because connect groups take us from a congregation to a family. That's why you need to be in a freedom group because when you don't have the joy, guess what? As a family, we can help bring joy and remind you of the gift of joy in your life. Come on, sir. Are you with me? This is why you need to sign up for a connect crew. This is why you need to sign up, go through Go Track, and jump on the dream team. This is why you need to come on a serve project with missions because when you get out and you serve people, it's amazing when you bring others joy, how joy begins to fill your heart and begins to fill your soul. But can I tell you, without Jesus... We begin to build our joy on stuff and on things. Joy that's not sustaining. Joy that makes us keep, keep searching. Has anybody ever bought a good pair of Crocs? Come on, anybody? Am I right? Come on, I got a lot of people. And, and what do they put on the, what is it, uh, charms? Like, yeah, yeah, I about went bankrupt when I bought charms for my kids. Come on, any of the parents in the house, am I right? How many are rocking Crocs right now? Where you at? Don't be scared, it's all right. Crocs and Jesus is good. My man's got his Crocs on. You got some charms, Bubba? Okay, tell, tell, is this Grandpa? Yeah, Grandpa, go buy, go buy your grandson some charms. Here we go, here we go. You said it from stage, so now you got to do it. All right, here we go. All right. But have you ever bought, have you ever bought a good pair of Crocs? You're like, whoa, I can't wait. And then all of a sudden, three months later, you're mowing in those same pair of Crocs. You doing yard work? And all of a sudden, you were so fired up for it, but now it's not as much value. There is so much joy. We pick things like, hey, it's going to bring us joy. I got to get the new shirt. I got to get the new car, right? I got to get the new house. I got to get the new iPhone because that last iPhone don't work, right? Joy is happening when you go from the green bubble to the blue bubble. Can I get an amen on that, right? <laughs> it's like we, we find our joy in everything. If I can get this raise, if I can get that, if I can just like, it's all joy that eventually it fades away. It's not sustaining. It's not continual. Can I tell you, friends, how many know joy in Jesus is the only thing that gives you strength and continuous joy in your life? It's a relationship with him. But I do know this. There come seasons where you got to fight for joy. You got to fight for joy in your life. Seasons where it's busy. Seasons where it's hard. Season where you got to fight for joy for your marriage, for your family. And all of a sudden, you, you start hating that job that you prayed for. Come on, anybody like, you got to find job. You got to find joy for your job. You got to find joy. And, and if I can be very transparent, like my wife and I, Kristen and I, we're in a season right now where we fighting for joy. We got four kids and every day we fighting for joy. Come on, I got any parents in the house? You know, I swear, one kid every week has got to get resaved. Somebody. <laughs> our life is so busy. We love our life. We're like, we love our life. But how many of you love life, but life is so busy, you almost can't enjoy the moment, right? And, and we sometimes we got we to fight for joy. I mean, my kids are in everything, every school event, every activity. We got a sports game every single night. Y'all pray for my wife, because at the sports game, she's yelling at everybody. I'm like, babe, stop. We are pastors. 
We can't do, we can't do this. How many know that ain't true? How many know we both are yelling? Come on, anybody like, like, we just call it passion. Anybody else call it passion? Let's go. Let's, right, let's go. Somebody's got to lose, but it ain't got to be us. Let's go. Not the barber household. I still haven't let my kids win in anything. That's true. I'm trying to teach them humility. But oh, are you following me, guys, right? Sometimes you got to fight for joy. I can tell you right now, my wife has been honest with me multiple times. She's like, hey, babe, I'm having a hard day. There's so much going on. I need you to bring joy to the house because I don't have the strength to bring joy right now. We got to fight for joy because many times joy and faith work together. And the fight for joy sometimes comes from the battle within. Whether it's busy or life just hits you and something hurts, you have to make a decision that joy is for you. And in faith, I'm going to choose joy because I know that God is in the middle of my situation. And I might not see why right now, but I know the greater days are ahead. And joy is coming because joy comes in the morning and joy is my strength. Joy is for me. You've got to trust the Lord that he's in the middle of your situation. Joy. Joy. Here's the next gift from heaven, one that I absolutely love. Healing. Somebody shout healing. healing. Come on, shout it louder. Healing, healing. is for me. Healing. Come on, how many believe in miracles? Come on, anybody in the house? There's this question, does God heal? Does he heal? It's a great question. Just a show of hands. How many believe in Jesus? Come on, throw your hands up. Come on, anybody. How many believe in the Word of God? How many believe that the Word of God is real for today? And how many, if you believe that the Word of God is real, then do you believe the Scripture that says He is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And if God did miracles then, how many know miracles still happen? Shout it out today. <laughs> Healing is here. Healing is for me, but it's a great question because there might be some people in the room that you're new to church and like, I don't know, I've never seen a miracle. Does God heal? Let me show you in Scripture what God says about healing and miracles because it's a gift from heaven. Matthew 9, verse 35 says this. Jesus, he went around through all the towns and villages, teaching at the synagogues, the churches, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing some. Healing a few. What does it say? Shout it out. Healing every disease and every sickness. Luke 9 verse 6 says this, so they set out. I love that word, they. It means it's not about a preacher, but it's about a church family going out together believing this gift. It says they set out, and they went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. And I love that. It says from village to village. Can I tell you, that's why we got outreach. That's why we got missions. That's why we're with our friends in Tanzania. That's why we got to keep going. How many know we still got more campuses we got to plan? Amen? We got some more streets we got to go to. We got some more villages we got to go to. If we truly are neighborhoods to nations, then we won't stop because everyone receives healing. Everyone receives healing. So when I think about healing got to understand that, that uh, there's this principle in the Old Covenant. It really describes the heart of Jesus. The Bible talks about being unclean, which means they're sick. And it says that those that are clean means that it's those that are healthy. What they would do is they would put the unclean on the outside of the city, outside the walls. And they said, don't touch the unclean if you're clean. Because if you do, it will make you unclean. But how many know Jesus showed up on the scene and he flipped the script? Jesus said, I'm not of this world. And this is the heart of Jesus. He says, hey, you put them outside the walls of the church. We're going to go outside of the walls of the church. You said don't embrace them. But Jesus says, I came to embrace the unclean because I believe in Jesus' name. They're going to be healed and touched and they're going to be clean again. That's the heart of Jesus. So what is, what is a miracle? I'm going to write this down. This is what a miracle is. A miracle is having the faith to believe that something you're told is impossible, you believe it's possible 
because of Jesus. It's having the faith to believe that something you're told won't happen. But because you believe in Jesus and that he's a healer, you believe the impossible can become possible. Come on, can I get an amen on that? You believe that? So if you're taking notes, get this. Jesus heals in three ways. He heals and you see miracles in three different ways. You, hear, you see God heal naturally, medically, and supernaturally or miraculously. God heals naturally. Can I tell you right now, it's amazing how God has built our bodies. Some people walk around saying, man, I've never seen a miracle. Yes, you have. Have you ever got a cut, a paper cut or something, and you don't need stitches? And all of a sudden, your, your, your finger heals by itself? Woo, that's a miracle. You are a miracle. Literally, God creating you is a miracle in the way he created your body. God heals naturally. God also heals medically. Can I tell you right now, I know this. God puts the anointing on those in the medical field to help be an answer. Can we go ahead right now and honor all those that are in the medical field? Come on, we can put our hands together. I know there's many in the room because they brought you an answer when you needed it the most. That's what it's all about. And thank God that I truly believe God anoints doctors and nurses to be a healing touch for you. God heals, heals medically. But then also God, this is the exciting part, is God heals supernaturally. He heals miraculously. In other words, when it doesn't make sense, when the odds are against you, and when the world says it can't happen, God says what? It can happen. He is a miracle worker. Can I get an amen on all that? You believe that? He is a miracle worker. He is a God that makes all things possible. He is a God that makes all things possible. And can I tell you right now, friends, science doesn't necessarily understand this. They think it's scientifically impossible. Atheists and those are like, there ain't no way. It's completely, there's no way a miracle can happen. That is completely impossible. And you know what? I agree with a lot of that. It is impossible. And it doesn't make sense when somebody like a blind beggar has been blind from birth, but God touches them and miraculously heals them. It doesn't make sense when a lady with the issue of blood has had bad blood her whole life and with the touch from Jesus just touching the hem of his garment, her blood work comes back into order exactly the way God said it's going to be. No, it doesn't make sense for an ocean to part and for people to walk on dry land to find healing mentally and emotionally from being in bondage and being in prison. It doesn't make sense for a man to be raised from the dead. But that doesn't mean that the Bible's not true. And it definitely doesn't mean that God isn't real. Can I tell you what it does mean? It just proves that God is God and that he is a healer and that he is a miracle worker and he is the same yesterday and forever. And healing was then and healing is it's now. Here's what you got to understand about believing God for a miracle. Come on, how many believe God can do a miracle in your life? Come on, anybody? Come on, raise your faith with me a little bit. Here's what it means if you want to write this down. Faith. It's not denying the facts. Faith is stating the truth. You're believing God for a healing. Faith is not denying the facts. Faith is stating the truth. In other words, if you, I, I ran into somebody one time, and I'm sitting across from him having lunch, and, uh, and you can tell he's just got a runny nose and a cold. I'm like, hey, bro, uh, I think you got a runny nose. You need a tissue? He's like, I ain't got a runny nose. I'm like... Bro, I can see it right now. Like, I can see boogers and snot bubbles. He's like doing this all the time. Like, bro, I, I see it right now. You sure? He's like, I ain't got a cold. I got a runny nose. I'm like, bro, it's right there. But my brother had been taught that if he, if he admits the pain, then he doesn't have faith. Faith is not denying the facts. Faith is stating the truth, but saying, yes, it might be broken, but my God is still a healer, Right? Yes, I might be diagnosed with cancer, but my God is still a healer. Yes, maybe they found a tumor in my body, but my God is still a healer. Yes, I may have anxiety and depression. Come on, Old City, but my God is a healer. My marriage is broken. My family is out of order, but I know this. I serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and healing is for me. Come on, you believe it? Come on, somebody. Give God some praise in the house. How many thankful for the healing touch of Jesus? And I'm telling you right now, healings are happening all over the place. 
We were just on an outreach event inside of a local prison. We had one of the chaplain workers walk up to us and said, hey, well, I just found out that I got a tumor in my body and this is about to take me out. And we laid hand and reached hands. There was 300 prisoners in the service with us and we stopped the service and we stretched our hands and we prayed for her. That was three weeks ago. I just got the report last night. She went back to the doctor and guess what? There ain't no more tumor no more. Come on, somebody. Let's go. And then my Katie family... My Katie family, I went with them uh, the 21 days of prayer and fasting one Saturday, and they shared with me that a lady in one of their connect groups all of a sudden got diagnosed with severe cancer. Check this out. They prayed for her over a Zoom call. How many know the Spirit of God doesn't have to just be in a room? But the Spirit of God can go right through the lens of that camera and touch every person in the living room, in their workplace, in their car, or wherever they're going from. They prayed for her, and that morning they reported back to let us know, praying through healing, through a Zoom call, she's completely cancer-free. There is no more cancer in her body. Come on, can we give it up for our Katie family? Show them some love. How many know our God is a healer? Somebody shout, healing, healing. is for me. You believe it? Joy is for you. Healing is for you. And then the last gift, my favorite, because it speaks to legacy, it speaks to generations, is this. Blessing. Blessing is for me. Somebody shout blessing. I know I'm having y'all shout a lot. Come on, I hope you leave here losing all your voice. Introverts, you're like, I haven't shouted this much in my entire life. Come on, somebody shout, blessing Blessing. is for me. Everybody, how many want the blessing of the Lord in your life? Come on, anybody? Blessing is favor. How many believe God can bless you? God can bless your marriage, amen? God can bless your family. God can bless your children and your children's children. How many want your kids to have it better than you? Come on, anybody in the house? How many want your grandbabies to have it better than you? But you got to decide to say yes to this gift. A blessing. But I got to give you some biblical context before I share a story, personal story, about how this gift of blessing is available here today. Let me give you some biblical context on Genesis 17, verse 4 and verse 7. It says this. This is my covenant with you. I love this. Listen to the heart of God. God is talking to Abraham. He said, I will make you. Can I just pause right there? Get that in your spirit. When you don't think you deserve it, God is saying, you do deserve it. When you think you're unqualified, God is saying, no, you are qualified. You don't have to be perfect. You just need to show up as you are, and I will make you exactly into exactly who I've called you to be. In other words, the blessing is for you. Nobody is excluded from this. He said, I will make you the father of the multitude of nations, and I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you. Check it out. What does it say, church? From generation to generation. And this is an everlasting covenant. Not something that was meant for yesterday, not something that just existed in the Old Testament, but it's available here today. It's an everlasting covenant. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12 through 13. I'm going to read out a different translation so you can turn to the screen. It says this, the Lord will open up his heavenly storehouse so that the skies will send rain. Rain in the Bible symbolizes blessing. He will send blessing on your land. Your land means your prayer. Your land means the biggest thing you're believing God for. God says, I'm going to bring blessing on your life at the right time. And I love this part. And he will bless everything that you do. Everything that you do. Here's what you got to understand about God's order of blessing. God gave us a model about a generational blessing. And that model in the Bible was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If Abraham said yes to this gift on his life, it will not only bless him, but it will bless his children and his children's children. Are you with me? Can I get a yeah? All right, you with me? It's a generational blessing. But you got to understand the gift and the blessing was first originally not for, Ad- for Abraham, it was first for Adam. God said the earth was without form, and disorder. So God came and he created the earth. Then he gave birth to Adam. And he created Adam and Eve. And he said, I want to bless you. I'm giving you dominion over the earth. But how many know Adam made a mistake? 
And all of a sudden, sin and shame and that that was in order all of a sudden became in disorder. So you can hear just the heart of God shouting through the scripture, saying, my blessing has not changed. I want to bless you, your marriage. I want to bless your family. So Abraham, will you be the one to help me bring order back into place? Will you, Abraham, will you be the answer for your family? Can I tell you right now, many believe in, some have taught that the blessing of God was only for the Jews, and the Bible says, talks about Gentiles, which is you and me. Somebody shout, you and me, all right, Gentile. So I'm going to read a scripture to you because it's going to show you that this blessing, this gift of blessing did not only exist back in the day with Abraham, but how many know the cross and Jesus changed everything? Let me say that again. How many know the cross and Jesus changed everything, right? Changed it all. Look what it says in Galatians 3, verse 13, and we're going to begin to close. It says, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law when he was hung on the cross. He took it upon himself, the curse of our wrongdoings, our sins. For it is written in the scripture, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Verse 14, through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles. That is you. Somebody shout me. God has blessed you with the same blessing that he promised Abraham. So why did Jesus die on the cross? For our sin? Yes, but that's not all. Why did Jesus die on the cross? For our shame? Yes, but that's not all. Did he die on the cross for our sickness? Yes, but that's not all. Jesus died on the cross and he shed his blood so he can bring you and me back into the bloodline of blessing so that the blessing that was on Abraham is the same blessing that's available for you and for your family and for your children and for your children's children. That's why with confidence I can say blessing is for you. It's for you. So God is shouting down from heaven saying, Abraham, and I want to bless you. Will you be the answer for your family and bring order back into place? And can I tell you, we see this all throughout the Bible. Anytime family is out of order from mistakes or sin or something, God says, I just need somebody to be an answer for their family to put blessing back in line. We see it even with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob's son, Joseph. His brothers threw him into slavery. He had wanted nothing to do with him. But God looked at Joseph and said, hey, Joseph, will you be the answer to bring blessing and order back into place? We see it with King David. David had a father who never told him he loved him, brothers who disowned him. And God looked at David and said, David, your family is out of order, but will you be the answer for your family to bring order back into place? Can I tell you right now, this anointing does not just fall on men. But can I tell you, there is mighty powerful women of God sitting in this room in an additional seating and watching in every online. God can use you to shift your family. Maybe you're a single mom. Maybe you're a widow. Maybe where you're at and you need to change something in your life. Can I tell you, God can use you. The lady at John chapter 4, the, the lady at John chapter 4 at the well, Jesus went to her, introduced himself. He said, I am the one, the living water where you will never thirst again. And the Bible says she went back to her village and her entire village, which is where her family was, they all got saved. She was the answer for her family. God looked at Esther and said, hey, I just need somebody to go to the king to fight for their race and to fight for their family and to fight for their people. Esther, will you be, will you be the answer? Brings everything back in place. Can I tell you, friends, this, this gift of blessing I know it personally. The only way I know to kind of lead and talk is just be transparent with you. Many know my father, and you've heard me talk about him because he's my hero, my best friend. Her Pastor Daniel and Jackie honor him. My dad is a local hero to many. Some may not know him. He, uh, most people know him as Mike Barber, number 86 for the Houston Oilers. Anybody remember the good old days? Love you, Blue. Let's go. Come on, if you're young, you miss the good days. I'm telling you right now. But the old love you blue days. Everybody knows my dad through football. Everybody knows my father through our incredible prison ministry, 
35 years traveling the nation of the world, bringing the hope of Jesus to prisons all over America. Can I tell you, this year alone, we just did the stats. We've already, we're already eight months in or nine months in. We've already reached right over 800,000 men and women inside the prisons around the nation and around the world. Come on, somebody. Hey, Hope City, we're a big part of that because of you. But everybody knows my dad that way, but most everybody doesn't know his story. They see the end, but they don't know the beginning. What you don't know is my dad grew up in a very broken home. He grew up in a home where he was abused and beat in every way you could imagine. Addiction, divorce, brokenness, suicide, anxiety, depression, everything you could, you could think of took place. He had a father who never told him he loved him his whole life. He had every reason to hate God. And here he is, my dad's the number one high school recruit in the nation coming out of high school. He's at college. He's at his third day of two-a-days. And all of a sudden, something just shakes on the inside of him. He could be so angry at God, so angry at his father, but he knew that something had to change. And he literally sprinted off the football field in full pads jumped in his car, drove over three hours to the nursing home, and he walked inside that nursing home and he told his father the very thing his father should have told him. He said, Dad, I love you and I forgive you. My dad will tell you right there, it was that moment where everything changed. You gotta understand the power of that moment because it was in that moment my father decided to be an answer for my family. It was in that moment, he decided that my upbringing is not going to be my becoming. And that blessing is for me. And that blessing is for my children. And blessing is for my children's children. And I'm so thankful because in that moment, my dad chose to love Jesus and to love his church, and because he loved Jesus, guess what? I now love Jesus, and I now love, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here with you if it wasn't for him. That's not even the best part. I got four amazing kids, and they all love Jesus, and they all love his church, and they've been baptized, and they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They love the house of God. But all of that, I'm living today because a man in 1972 decided the blessing is for me, and blessing is for my house, and he chose to be an answer for my family. If God can do it for us, why can't God do it for you? Amen. Joy is for you. Healing is for you. Blessing is for you. So my question to you is this. What is your Abraham? What has been heavy on you? Have you ever asked this question, God, why is this one thing in my life harder for me than it is for everybody else? Everybody has something. You think, don't think that God doesn't love you. Don't think that God doesn't care about you. But you know what? Even though that one thing has been heavy, how many know you still here and you still breathing? You got the strength to carry it. Don't look at it as God not loving you. Maybe it's God trying to get your attention to say, that right there is where I need you to be an Abraham in your family. That right there is where I need you to be an answer for your family. That right there is why I need you to change and bring order back into your family. Because maybe addiction is ran in your family, but you're going to decide today I'm going to be an answer for my family and addiction stops with me. My children will not suffer. My children's children will not suffer. Depression and anxiety, it stops with me. Broken marriages, stop with me. Bad relationships, stop with me. Come on, Old City, do I got anybody in the house who's thankful that you want to be an answer for your family? Because joy is for you. Healing is for you. And blessing is for you. Come on, give Jesus like 10 seconds of crazy praise in the house. Yeah. Come on. Stay standing. We're closing. 
Every pastor has three closes. It's the truth. Or every evangelist has three closes. Can I tell you right now, everything starts with the relationship with Jesus. I love this scripture, Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy before him? You. He went through the cross so you can have joy. He went to the cross so you can have healing. He went to the cross because he was an answer for you. You can now be an answer for your family. But it all starts with the relationship with Jesus when you sign a covenant on your heart with heaven then these gifts from heaven come for you. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, Nobody looking around, additional seating, every campus, online. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. And I'm asking you, it doesn't matter who's around you, even if it's family with you. Don't let shame hold you back. On the count of three, I'm gonna ask you to make a statement with heaven and throw your hand up. If you're online, you can just type Jesus. You can respond that way. You need to give your life to Jesus for the first time. Maybe you need to rededicate your life saying, Brandon, I need joy, I need healing. I want to be an answer for my family, but I got to get my relationship with Jesus back on track. The best man you can be is a man of God. The best woman you can be is a woman of God. Lead with Jesus. You get the gifts of heaven. So on the count of three, I'm not looking for a camera shot or nothing. I'm asking you to make a statement with heaven. And I want you to throw your hand up like you just scored the winning touchdown, made it the winning shot, and say, I need Jesus. Hands are already going up, ready. One, two, three, shoot it up and keep it up. Come on, just keep it up. Come on, hands going up everywhere. Come on, just keep it up. Make a stay one to heaven. I just wanna see you. Come on, I see you over here. I see your family. Come on, I see you back here. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I see you back there. Come on, Over City, we got so many hands going up. Additional seating, we see you, family. Come on, type Jesus in the chat right now. If you need Jesus, let's go. Come on, how many thankful? Come on, the Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. Come on, can we celebrate like crazy? Can we give Jesus all that he is? Yeah. Come on, everybody shout this prayer. Shout, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, Jesus, give you my life. Take my sin away. Come into my heart. Give my life to you. It's as simple as that. Here's the last thing. We're closing. I told you three closes. Because I feel it in my spirit. I want everybody looking up because we family, right? Do we judge each other? No. Come on, do we judge each other? No. Or do we love each other right where we are? I believe there's some people in the room today that you need to be an answer for your family. You want it to stop with you. And if you think for a second, Brandon, what if I'm the one that brought the pain? Can God still use me? The story of Abraham, there's a son by the name of Lot who had everything. He made a mistake. But the Bible says in Corinthians, he was a righteous man. Even if you made the mistake, God can still use you. You can still be the answer for your family. I don't know who's in the room today, but I'm telling you right now, you say, I want to make a statement with heaven that I want to be the answer for my family because I want blessing in my life. Come on, if I'm talking to you, throw your hand up. Come on, shoot your hand up. Come on, where you at? You're saying, I'm tired of it running into my family. No more generational curses, but generational blessings. Come on, throw your hands up to heaven. Throw your hands up to heaven. Come on, I want to pray over you. And then we're going to sing. I don't know if we don't have the team. Okay, everybody throw your hands up. Come on. Here we go. Everybody, I want to pray a blessing over you. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for today, Lord. Father, I pray your blessing in your favor. Father, I don't know everybody's story, but I know this. They made a statement to saying they want to be an answer for their family, God. And Father, I thank you right now that joy fills their spirit and fills their soul, God. Wherever they need healing, we pray healing in Jesus' name. Father, heal every person from addiction. Anybody with anxiety and depression, heal them, Lord God. No more suicidal thoughts. No more cancer. No more blood work. Father, you are a healer, and you heal today, God. And I pray blessing 
blessing over their family, and I pray favor over their family. Bless their house. Bless their children. Bless their grandchildren. Bless everything that they put their hands to, God. Thank you for the gifts of heaven. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your healing, and thank you for your blessing. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, if you believe in Home City, come on, give Jesus one more shout of praise. Come on.